Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there once again to this, the WP Builds podcast. We're on to episode number 252, can you believe it? And this episode is entitled, Let Someone Else Take Care of Your Website Policies. It was published on Thursday, the 27th of October, 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and in a little while, I'll be joined by my guest, Hans Skillrud, as we talk about Termageddon. But before that, I've got a few things to say. The first one is to say if any of you attended the Page Builder Summit last week, I am really appreciative, very appreciative of all of the participation, everybody getting involved, the speakers, the sponsors, and of course the attendees. We really appreciate it. That is now tied off, and so we're moving on. And what is the next thing coming on the horizon? Well, of course, it's Halloween, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and all that good stuff. And if you're interested in getting a product or a service, well, I've got a page that you might like to check out. It's an easy to remember URL. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash black. That's wpbuilds.com forward slash black. And over there, you're going to find a growing list of products, services, and all of that stuff that's on offer during Black Friday. Now, it may be that when you go to that page, you're thinking to yourself, well, there's not as much on there as there was last year. That's probably true because I'm adding things as and when I hear about them. Now, if you're feeling generous and you say to yourself, well, actually, Nathan, you've missed a deal. Well, then please tell me about it. You can email me admin at wpbuilds.com or you could fill out the form add your deal if you are one of the people who in fact owns a product or service that's on the page wpbuilds.com forward slash black click the blue add your deal button if you'd like to be receive updates all about these things as and when i hear about them there's a receive deal updates button on that page as well the page itself is searchable and filterable and if you want to reach out and tell me anything about that page please feel free to do that but it also does help there are some affiliate links on there and so if you click on those during the black friday sale it does help to keep the lights on Okay, next up is to say that we have some advertising slots available. If you have a product or service and you would like to get yourself in front of a WordPress-specific audience, please reach out. Go to wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise, and I'm sure that we can work something out. Okay, let's get stuck into today's episode, shall we? As I said, episode number 252. Today, I'm chatting with Hans Skillrud from Termageddon. Now, Termageddon is a service which enables you to forget about terms and conditions to forget about website policies because they will do all of that for you. Hans is here to describe how the platform will manage that for you, how it might work for you and your clients, what they cover, which jurisdictions do they cover and so on. It's a really great service and very kindly Hans has reached out to me and said well We would love to offer your listeners a coupon code. And so if you'd like to do that, there is an order code WP builds. Click on the links in the show notes and you will get 10% off your first Termageddon order. So that again, the code, all lowercase WP builds is going to get yourself 10% off. So have a listen to the podcast today. See what you make of it. And if you're thinking to yourself, I am fed up with doing this for clients. I'd rather somebody else did this for me. Well, Termageddon, they certainly can and you'll get yourself 10% off using that code. I hope you enjoy the podcast. I am joined today on the podcast by Hans Skillrud from Termageddon. How are you doing, Hans? I'm good, Nathan. How are you? Yeah, really good. Where are you at the minute? I am in Chicago. Are you are you in one of those famous tall towers that we're all seeing when we watch movies and so on, or do you live in the, the suburbs? I'm in the distant suburbs. I have like an acre with like chickens and bees, and I, I'm trying to live as much of a nature life as I can in the Chicago suburbs. Oh, nice. Very, very yeah. nice. Hans is on the podcast today because of a service that you may well have used in the past, but if you haven't, prick your ears up because a lot of this sort of stuff is going to be incredibly useful to you. It kind of revolves around the law or at least privacy policies terms of service and what have you but i think hans you were keen right at the outset to to say that you yourself are not a lawyer so there is that sort of slight caveat i guess 
You know, with Termageddon being a technology company, I think about 20 times a day, I say, please note, this is not legal advice. Termageddon, we're not a legal service provider. So although my wife is a licensed privacy attorney who's provided guidance to U.S. legislators on how to write privacy laws, we still have to wave the we're not a law firm type of flag. And so. that's fine because that isn't the service you're offering, is it? You're offering that's something right. quite different. Uh, it's called Termageddon. Right. It is probably, as you would expect the spelling of it to be, it's T-E-R-M-A-G-E-D-D-O-N dot com you might want to pause the podcast and go and check out the website before we start talking but just in a few minutes what's um what's termageddon all about yeah so um termageddon creates website policies um for companies that you know may not have 15 grand a year laying around uh for a privacy attorney to do it for them um so uh simply put things like names and emails which most modern websites collect these days, things like names and emails are regulated pieces of data um, under multiple state and country privacy laws. And if you collect that data from people from certain countries or states, you may need uh, to comply with their privacy laws and provide a privacy policy with disclosures uh, that are required under those respective privacy laws. Um, and then, you know, Termagun also offers a terms of service, uh, a terms of service, otherwise known as a terms and conditions or terms of use. Uh, a terms of service is a statement that helps limit your liability as a business owner uh, by basically stating simple rules to using your website. And they could be as simple as, you know, hey, we offer links to third party websites. We're not responsible when you click those links. Um, so um, a terms of service helps you limit your liability as a business owner. A privacy policy helps you comply with privacy laws. Okay, thank you. Now, it's a curious mm -hmm. niche to be in, so I'm going to rewind the clock on your life a, a little bit and, and ask sure. how did you get to the point where you were running or you know sharing the running of a business all to do with the law, terms of services, privacy policies, and so on? What, just basically rewind. Tell us how you got to where you are in the WordPress space and how, how this all came about. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2012, I started a web design agency. Um, I grew it to about 12 people uh, over the course of seven years. Um, during that time, I copy and pasted quite a few privacy policies for my clients, thinking it was no big deal. Uh, and then I started to date a privacy attorney uh, who is now my wife and co-runs Termageddon with me. Um, my wife is a privacy attorney. Um, she was on the opposite spectrum. Uh, rather than copying and pasting privacy policy templates, she was creating privacy policies that were actually compliant with privacy laws uh, for her clients, charging, you know, 5K or more. Um, and uh, Termageddon was kind of a meeting of the minds uh, between her and I. Um, she felt like there was a lot of monotony in her day-to-day -day operations of generating, uh, of, of handwriting privacy policies for clients. And I told her, you know, I don't think I'm the only web designer out there that's copying and pasting privacy policies. And, you know, she couldn't believe that. And I couldn't believe that she couldn't believe it. So, you know, one thing led to another and uh, we launched Termageddon um, as a alternative to a privacy attorney so that website policies can be accessible to all business types, not just huge corporations. Um, and yeah, that, that was the grounds for how we created it. I wanted to create a tool to help web designers educate their clients on the importance of website policies and give their clients a solution far that far exceeded, you know, what a template can do. And my wife wanted to engineer a system uh, where we even now have attorneys uh, leveraging our platform uh, for their own clients uh, to generate their own privacy policies for their clients. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. It seems from the outside, and I could be completely wrong about this, it seems from the outside as if in the United States, the the, the lawyers get called more often than they, they appear to do in the UK where I live. And I'm, I'm imagining that there are other countries that would say the same thing. Is Was this born out of kind of a, a real need? In other words, do people get the lawyers out relatively frequently in the United States? In other words, without these documents on your site or pages on your site written correctly, is there a genuine... Is there a genuine moment where you could fall foul of the law and get yourself in actual real trouble? Yeah. So, you know, uh, are Americans and attorneys um, sue happy? Of course. I think that's, you know, we see that in many industries. We've seen that with accessibility, especially in our industry. 
um, accessibility lawsuits. But in general, um, I would say no, actually, mm -hmm. probably to your surprise. Yep. No, it's, yep. it really has not been a big deal. Um, you know, privacy laws are a new thing. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't even say that. Privacy laws have existed for 20 plus years, but they were never really enforced. Um, but with the onset of the General Data Protection Regulation, which protected EU residents, um, when it, which protected the personal information of EU residents and now regulated that data, businesses of all sizes started getting fined uh, for noncompliance. And you can actually go to gdprenforcementtracker.com uh, to see this data, uh, but you'll see basically an ever increasing number of fines being issued. Um, there's you know one person companies being fined 60,000 euros for changing their subscribers email address without their consent. So um, you know I think a lot of people think, well, it's it only happens to big businesses like getting fined or you know getting fined for privacy noncompliance. But in reality, what I always say is, well, no, that's what the media covers because that's, you know, in, that's um, exciting information. You know, Facebook gets fined $4 billion. You know, that's going to certainly make the headlines uh, a lot more easily than just a one-person company getting fined 60,000 euros or something like that. So um, fines are now being issued, um, especially in um, the European Union. Uh, however, America has taken notice of these rights that have been given to EU residents. And you know, of course, the UK deployed the UK Data Protection Act, which is more or less a mere copy of GDPR at the moment. They have some revisions that will most likely require updates in the future. But um, speaking to the US point of view, um, we don't actually have a federal privacy law that you know requires like privacy policy disclosures for all businesses. Uh, rather, we have individual states uh, creating their own regulations for their own residents' personal information. So, you know, if you collect information from people throughout the U.S., you may need to comply with multiple privacy laws in the U.S. Uh, because, as I'm sure you know, privacy laws don't care about where your business is located. Mm -hmm. They only are there to protect their citizens. So, um, yeah, a huge component to Termageddon is just the education part. Um, I, as a web agency owner building websites for my clients, had no idea, you know, that New York has multiple privacy bills that will enable their citizens to sue any website owner for collecting as little as an email address on a contact form uh, without proper privacy policy disclosure. So um, there's a lot of education that needs to be provided in this industry, and that is certainly something we are focused on. Um, and we try not to be like fear mongering. Um, uh, it's sometimes hard because we're well when we're in we're talking to a group of privacy attorneys and we're all having a beer and we're like what the heck is going on here like this is insane like how complex this is becoming and then we go to you know people who aren't experts in privacy and they have absolutely no idea about this stuff and and so we're just constantly balancing out you know how do we educate people without kind of overstepping our bounds really yeah, yeah. um i guess the the two things that you mentioned right at the top were privacy policies and terms of service is it mm -hmm. fair to say that that's mostly what you deal with or is are there kind of like more feathers to your bow? Yeah, so um, privacy policies in terms of service, I think sh are, are great things to have for virtually any website. Um, a term again license also includes a disclaimer. A disclaimer is an additional policy that helps further your, limit your liability if you need to disclaim certain things. So a good example is if you're a law firm and you have a law firm website, you may want to include a disclaimer that says, you know, nothing on our website should be considered legal advice. Um, or maybe you are in the medical world or health world. Um, you may want to say nothing on this website should be considered health advice or maybe offer affiliate links or... Um, there's a couple other examples, but those are really the main reasons why one might want a disclaimer um, to further limit their liability as a business owner. Um, and then we also provide an end user license agreement, which is hardly ever used because most of our clients are website owners. Um, however, if you do offer like software that people can license and use elsewhere or sell, um, you might want an end user license agreement to state those rules and what that relationship looks like as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to ask you to be yourself. In other words, be be a resident of Chicago. And obviously, caveat emptor, the things that you're about to say may completely differ if you live in the UK or in another part of the world. But nevertheless, if I was running a, a web agency living in Chicago, as you do, what would be the kind of things that I would be 
definitely telling my clients they needed not not kind of like this would be a nice idea this is this is an absolute basic minimum that needs to go on your your website that i've just built is it kind of industry specific does it matter what kind of industry they're in or is there just some basic blanket defaults that could be applied so for the ease of example i would say the, there is a very clear basic default that i am trying to educate all agency owners on and that is when you build a website for a client and you build like a contact form or install Google Analytics, you need to say the statement, something along the lines of, hey, I built a website for you that's collecting personal information. That data is regulated by multiple states and countries. I think you should look into getting a privacy policy added to your website. And that is something I'm trying to message, not just to Chicago agencies, to, but to virtually any agency, because, well, let's be real, a website can be ex accessed by anyone anywhere. So. I really think it is extremely important for agency owners to just tell their client, hey, I helped build something for you that collects regulated data. You need to look into the re legal ramifications of what you need to do to comply with laws because of that. And that is a key component that I think agency, many agencies are taking a huge misstep. Um, I get it. I lost a lot of hair running an agency for seven years, and I know what it feels like to like not want to add one more thing to the list. but you got to get some sort of documentation perhaps like written out where your client has acknowledged that you told them at least that they need website policies. Yeah. Yeah. Because this protects your agency. And I'm a huge, huge advocate of saying like, if you're a web agency, like you should not be making decisions for your business or for your clients, like business decisions for your clients and like complying with privacy laws is certainly not a place where you want to overstep your bounds. And if you are a professional web designer and you're building stuff that collects regulated data, you just have to disclose it and you don't have to be salesy. Um, in fact, I, I always recommend having your client have the option to decline having policies have an option for your client to contact a privacy attorney and have a, uh, the option for a client to sign up for like an in-between, like a, a, a website policies generator, um, like Termageddon. But I cannot stress enough, you know, to a large degree, I think we're in what I call the proactive era uh, before some of these bills get passed where consumers can sue any website owner for collecting the personal information. Um, and it's just, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm a small business owner and let's just say I, I ran a small business that's not related to privacy and I had someone build me a website and then I find out I'm getting sued because I didn't have a privacy policy on my site and I find out my professional web designer never even told me I needed one. I, I don't know. I, ha I hate to say it, but I'd be pretty upset with them, <laughs> you know, and, that, and maybe that's just a personal thing. Maybe that's a maybe that's an American or a Chicago thing. I don't know, but I'd be pretty upset if I if I paid someone a lot of money for a website and then I found out I was doing something non-compliant yeah, and I was I guess, never told I was. I guess there's a maybe a sort of gray area there, not entirely sure what the, the line you may have crossed when the responsibility falls on your shoulders. But certainly there can be no harm in informing all of your clients that this would be a good idea and here's a good way of doing it you know if you if you at least tell them look you've got a contact form there are some basic things that need to go along with that contact form well they can decline right but at least you've done your exactly. job and if you if you put the form in front of them and they tick the box saying look, i understand but i'm not going to bother then you've kind of backed yourself Perfect. out of that problem Exactly. You now have the documentation. You've done exactly what I think any good business owner should do is put the liability into the hands of the person that's responsible for it. And it's not you, the web, unless you've entered into a contract where you said, I'm going to build a website for you compliant with all applicable laws, which I would never recommend to any web design owner, unless you're charging like 300 K or more per website. Um, you know, it's, it's best just to educate get the documentation, protect your own business, and then move on to your next website. Yeah. And that way, if they, like they're a business owner, they have risks to deal with every single day and privacy law compliance might be something they're like, you know what, I don't wanna stress about it, I do wanna get a website policy added. Or maybe they're like, you know what, I don't wanna put that type of money into that type of stuff right now, I wanna put my money elsewhere and I'm just gonna roll the dice. Whatever the case may be, it's their job, it's their responsibility to figure this stuff out, not yours, but, I would say that you have an ethical need, you have an ethical reason, and, and I would say a, a financial reason, incentive to um, to disclose this. Um, maybe financial, a, a liability incentive, I guess, might be the better way to word yeah, it. Yeah. Like you just, it's just, you're helping out your clients like with education and, and then 
protecting your own business while doing it. Okay. So, um, so we've sort of drawn those lines and we figured out that we need to be doing some of this work. And it, it clearly it's an area where most people who are building WordPress websites, we, we, we're not married to lawyers. And, um, mm. and we are just, you know, hoping for the best. So I guess that's where Termageddon comes in. You've got this service which enables us to to take some of the burden of that and generate some of the things which need to be generated. And so there's questions which will follow on after your description, but I wonder if you could describe what the process is, not not of signing up and so on, but what the process is sure. inside of Term again, once you've you know filled out your email and got your account all set up, what's the process of setting things up? How does the service actually work? And one of the things that I'm curious to, to know is how does it keep itself updated in the background? Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, our tool helps identify what privacy laws actually apply to a business. Um, I, you know, if you, if, if you're listening to this and you decide, you know what, I'm going to hire an attorney, good for you. That's awesome. But if your attorney doesn't first start off with, let's figure out what privacy laws you need to comply with, a mistake has been made and you should shop for another attorney. Um, because you must find what you need to comply with before you can provide the disclosures actually required under those respective right. laws. So our tool helps identify what privacy laws apply to you. And then we ask the subsequent questions needed uh, to, to generate um, your policies. So you, you, you answer a questionnaire, you find out what laws apply to you, and then you continue answering the questionnaire uh, to provide the disclosures required under those privacy laws. And at the end of it, you click submit and you not only get a privacy policy uh, for the sake of this example, um, you also get an embed code an embed code is what you copy and paste into the body of your privacy policy page of your website. So when people visit your website and visit your privacy policy page, the code fires and boom, there's your privacy policy. Uh, but what's great about that method of embedding um, Termagen's embed the code onto your privacy policy page is the fact that we control what that copy says. So, you know, after you sign up with Termagen and get your policies embedded onto your site, it becomes our job to monitor privacy laws notify you when those laws change and we can even push updates to those policy pages with new disclosures as they become required um, so that's a key component of term again is the fact that you know i feel i feel like so many people are like all right well let's just get a template and get it added to the website outside of the fact that i've never seen a template compliant with all applicable privacy laws um, in my life i've never seen one outside of that fact there's still not an answer to how do i update the privacy policy when the laws change. And that's the component that we're trying to fix for people. Um, you know, there's 20 privacy bills in America right now. Hmm. Um, Canada has proposed a bill that will enable um, their citizens to sue any website owner for collecting their data without proper disclosures. Um, the UK has a, an amendment to their privacy law. I mean, this is an ever changing thing. And, you know, I don't know, I, I think small business owners need to Small business owners need to find a way to be present online. They need to be found online in today's day and age. And like, I don't want privacy regulations, which are an amazing thing to help people get rights to their privacy. I don't want that to see that be a hindrance to small businesses in the future. Yeah, it's really curious because if you were to if you were to ask a, a, a website owner about the design of their site, they're not going to be happy with a design from like eight years ago. They want it to be mm -hmm. up to date and modern mm -hmm. and look the part. And I guess, although it, it's a bit of a you know, stretch, perhaps is the right word, the same would be true for the legal side of things. You really, I guess, don't want to be caught with a policy which actually the law on that changed three or four years ago. What you're saying now really doesn't protect you from, from the laws that we've now got in force. And so having something automated like this just seems like a, well, a bit of a no-brainer. Can I just rewind 30, 40 seconds, when it, whenever it was that you were saying about the, the onboarding process in terms of asking the questions, I'm, I'm curious to know what, what are the kind of questions that you're asking? Because I can well imagine you're going to ask me, where is my business located? But beyond that, I'm, I don't know what kind of questions you're going to be wanting to ask me. So privacy laws, it's very important to understand that they are out to protect the personal information of the residents of that certain state, country, or continent. Privacy laws do not care about where your business is located. So you may be based in Chicago, but if you do business in California or even collect the personal information of California residents, there could be one or multiple 
California privacy laws that comply to you. And that's a key component to understand. And that's why our tool, yes, we do ask where you're located, but more importantly, uh, when you go through the privacy policy questionnaire, we're here to figure out what privacy laws apply to you. So the first question we ask is what states in the United States do you do business in? And you can select all or select specific states, but let's just say you select California. Well, that is one qualifier uh, for the California Consumer Privacy Act. So the California Consumer Privacy Act specifically says, you know, to be required to comply with this law, you must first do business in California. And if you say yes to this, that, you have to say yes to one of the following three options. Do you have annual gross revenues of more than $25 million? Do you annually buy, receive, sell, or share the personal information of 50,000 or more California consumers, households, or devices? Or number three, do you derive 50% or more of your annual revenue from selling the personal information of California consumers? So you may do business in California, but if you said no to all those three options, then you actually don't need to comply with the California Consumer Privacy Act. Um, and there's a minor asterisk to that, but for the sake of this conversation, yeah, that enough. would be the case. Um, we have some follow-up questions later, but, um, but that is a really good example of how we figure out, you know, if you need to comply with a certain privacy law. It's actually pretty simple. You know, we just look at what the privacy law states on what is required, you know, how can this privacy law apply to you? And we bring that into a question, uh, into a questionnaire and just ask those questions. Um, so that is what helps us figure out what privacy laws apply to you. Okay. And so after you figured out the, you know, you've been asked this bank of questions, do you, do you then, you mentioned that there's like an iframe, do you get like a, a, do you get to read and inspect and type over anything that you think may not be the case? Let's say, for example, that you've got an external lawyer who takes this as a baseline for something and then decides to rewrite it. Or is it just, here's, here's the iframe, just stick it on your website and be done with it. So yeah, the, um, so it's not an iframe, it is a JavaScript embed code, okay. but I mean, for this, yeah, it's the same concept. Yep. Um, uh, you can embed it right then and there after you generate your policies and you can actually share your term again license with your attorney or with a colleague or whoever you wish. And you or that your attorney can go in and customize the policy however you wish. Mm -hmm. So our tool will generate the policy um, which have all the disclosures required under the required respective privacy laws. However, maybe an attorney wants to customize it for whatever reason they may have. May, they may have. Um, yes, they can customize it right through the term again dashboard, and upon saving, that update gets pushed right to the website policy page. Okay, got it. Now, one of the things which became pretty clear in the last bit that you were saying about, for example, California and what have you, is just this this sort of jurisdictional nature of the whole thing and and the fact that it is complicated by the fact that it it depends where the person is that's looking at your website not where yes. the business is located so on that are there certain areas of the world where you guys have got it covered and you're happy with that and you're encouraging people from the united states let's say canada and so on and are, are there other areas where you have yet to dip your feet in the water and you'd say just for now our service is not ready for you. That's right. Yeah, we're, we're you know, con comprehensiveness is our number one goal. So as much as we'd love to say we're available worldwide, we're not going to do that until we feel like we've done a, uh, an excellent job at providing the disclosures required under those applicable laws. So currently, Termigun oversees Canada, um, uh, Canada's privacy law, Pipetta, the UK's privacy law, UK DP DPA. Um, the EU's privacy law, uh, GDPR, and all applicable privacy laws within the United States, um, uh, Nevada Revised Statutes Chapter 603A, the Delaware Online Privacy Protection Act, both of California's privacy laws, even though technically they've just approved their third. Um, and then we're actively monitoring all changes uh, throughout those countries. Uh, shortly, we will also be launching Australia. Um, that is from time of recording, it is 10 days away. Um, and that will be taking into account the Australian Privacy Act of 1988, which we believe will most likely see changes um, over the coming years, given all the changes we've seen throughout the rest of the world. Um, so therefore, we're, we're prepping for that country as well. Um, so um, we are compatible for businesses formed in the US, Canada, UK, Ireland, and soon Australia. Okay, nice. That's a that's a heck of a lot. Well done. The um, <laughs> one of the things I was curious about is obviously if things change, 
And you, as as a subscriber to Termageddon, I, I kind of want to be out of the loop of that. I, I want you guys to be taking care of that. And in a sense, I don't really wish to be too concerned about it. I'm hoping that you've taken the concern away from me. Nevertheless, mm-hmm. there may be something that changes, which, because I'm not following the law, but it's pretty seismic and I ought to have been informed about it. What What is the relationship that you strike up with people who use your service, who you feel that something big has happened, some big law has changed, you need you need to inform them. Do, do you have that kind of ongoing relationship? Do you, do you get people to subscribe to your newsletters or do you proactively push content out and tell people that, look, this has changed, be mindful of this, this, and this? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say the, the first tier of communication is um, our customers. And um, our tool, because we have all this data on, you know, um, on the questionnaires they've answered, we know that, you know, if Colorado passes a privacy law, we need to notify all users have, who have said they do business in Colorado. Um, so the first tier is just communicating directly with them via email and maybe even doing follow-ups depending on the, um, on the respective privacy law that, you know, hey, a new law has passed or an existing law has been amended. Here's what you need to know um, with regard to your website privacy policy. Um, and then typically we're able to push automatic updates, but every now and then we might have a new extra question that we never saw coming. A uh, great example is when CCPA went into effect and required certain businesses to provide a toll-free telephone number uh, to opt out of their online information being collected. Wow. Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think any privacy attorney could have predicted that one. Wow. Um, so uh, there's always zingers that governments like to throw out there, but for the most part, we're able to push automatic updates. Um, and yeah, that's that's um, the first tier of communication. You know, the next tier is the fact that we, you know, certainly blog about these changes. We and then we, you know, obviously post in our social media accounts. Uh, but really, the the primary goal of communication for us is to actively communicate changes via email to our customers, and not. And that's why I think we're very reluctant to send like marketing emails to our customers. Yeah. Um, because we don't want our open rates. We want our open rates to be as high as possible. So we're very strict about kind of how we message our customers. Okay. Uh, we want it to be very valuable information they need to see. Yeah. Thank you. The um, the next thing I was thinking about was obviously there's a real high barrier to the, the expertise required to read these policies. I mean, honestly. Hands, mm-hmm. I think, if you put one of these, um, po- not the policies that you create, but the stuff that you probably have to read in the background to create your mm-hmm. policies, I don't think I would be able to make any sense out of it. Every time I've read any legal document, I can't manage more than a few seconds before I'm uh, totally out to sea. So the reason I'm asking <laughs> this is simply, I guess that you are, well, in the case of your wife, we know that she's an expert, but do you to cover the geographical locations, the UK and Ireland and mm-hmm. coming Australia and so on. Do you have trusted partners over on, on those parts of the world that that make sure that they're feeding back the correct information to you? How does all that work? Yeah, so my wife is the president of Termingen. She's actually the expert when it comes to privacy laws. I'm more of the uh, liaison to help translate her brain. <laughs> uh, but uh, but she truly is the expert. And um where to start with Donata, I guess. Um, well, for one, she was just elected chair of the American Bar Association's e-privacy committee, uh, meaning that she's overseeing that committee now. Um, she has brought on the person who wrote Canada's privacy law, Pipetta. Um, she's brought on, um, the well, just last week, she brought on the head of privacy for the CDC, Pfizer, and Uber. So, um, you know, her full-time job is monitoring privacy laws, and we use lots of software that does that. We participate in multiple privacy organizations uh, with regard to that. Um, and she's constantly in the know because she's running now the, the the department at the American Bar that oversees this stuff. But just because it's the American Bar certainly does not mean we don't talk other topics. Um, as I mentioned just now, or just earlier, you know, she brought on Michael Powers, the person who wrote the electronic documents portion of Pipetta um, to do a lecture circuit. So, um, you know, because of the broad reaching nature of privacy laws, every every privacy attorney worth their salt is talking about this stuff, um, even if they're not necessarily located in that area. So um, basically what we do is we leverage a bunch of software to alert us of these changes. And we also are highly connected with the 
largest privacy organization in the world, the International Association of Privacy Pro Professionals, as well as um, the American Bar Association, actively communicating not only with internal privacy laws happening in the U.S., but external laws and how they apply across countries. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a rather peculiar question because I'm going to ask you to highlight areas where maybe term again and doesn't isn't the best fit and I presume sure. there are there must be areas and and maybe it's not easy for you to sum that up in a couple of sentences but are there are there things like red flags if you like are there certain things which you yourself would say actually do you know what you've got a you've got a web presence which is really out of the constraints of what we're able to do for you you got any insight absolutely. on that absolutely Absolutely. So I'm I'm a big fan of always advocating that if you can afford a privacy attorney, go that route. Like nothing beats hiring a privacy attorney. Um, Termageddon is an alternative to a privacy attorney. We're a technology company. You know, we're trying to make website comprehensive website policies accessible to virtually any small business who can afford ninety nine bucks a year. Um, we so a great example is that uh, we only offer Termageddon in English. So if your website offers multiple languages, uh, we're not a good fit. Um, Termageddon is not going to be able to handle websites that knowingly target children uh, because that would enact uh, what's here in the U.S. called COPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Uh, COPA privacy prote privacy is uh, a big deal and something that uh, a, a very skilled attorney would have to review. Um, another good example is uh, when websites collect what's called protected health information, otherwise known as PHI, that will enact HIPAA. Uh, HIPAA protects the medical information of, of Americans, and that makes us not a good fit either. Um, and then if you are in financial services, um, uh, financial services, uh, meaning that like you can... Um, if you have a website that, you know, you're pre-approving people for loans or you're logging in to access banking information, that, that all that type of stuff is uh, requires additional disclosures that go outside of the scope of, of what Termagain's capabilities are. Um, last but not least, we, we do not offer our services to government organizations, although we probably could. Uh, we just don't do that currently. Uh, we are exploring it because we've had a lot of government agencies reach out to us asking to leverage our tool, and we've declined, but that number is getting bigger and bigger, so we th we're thinking about launching ah, government that's, that's uh, interesting. at some point. Yeah, so. okay. Well, that's that's really honest of you, and thank you. I'm, I'm curious, yeah, actually, on the, in the onboarding process, would that come out? Would I would I be kind of yep. flagged as, actually, do you know what, There's there's a... <laughs> There's a website here that that touches on I don't know ch children's content or something like that. Just okay, go no further. Yeah, we're not we're not going to be for you. Yeah, yeah. We ask those questions and and you know if you answer it the wrong way, like do you target children and you say yes, you know you get the big up. Oh, we're not a good fit. Call us for a right. refund. Right. Um, and we need to bring that more into our like marketing material. But I, we just have so many customers that don't read our blogs or our educational material, they just go and purchase. So we make sure that through the questionnaire, we have kind of like, uh, I don't know, honey holes. Yep. What do you call it? Yep. Uh, honey, yeah, honey pots. That's I it, forget. I think, yep. Yeah, yeah, honey pot. But uh, we catch, you know, we just make sure we communicate that uh, throughout the, okay. the questionnaire. Yeah. Um, again somebody like me who doesn't really have much need for a lawyer i mean i really the only times i need a lawyer is when i'm kind of thinking about moving house or something like that and mm -hmm. so i don't really have any relationship you know there's no telephone number at the front of my brain if i needed legal advice do you um do you have any sort of partnerships with law firms let's say for example that i do come across the barrier you know your your onboarding wizard says we're not a good fit do you do you offer to hook them up with other people partners who could help them we do yeah and our list is growing but like a great example is ryan kinney r-i-a-n kinney k-i-n-n-e-y uh, ryan is very involved in the wordpress community and uh we've uh, become good friends with her and uh we send a lot of business like referrals her way and and you know um and we have a couple other privacy attorneys that we we like that we we may send business to as well uh so yeah as time goes on we've just kind of naturally collected a list of attorneys who like our product and like send their smaller clients our way and we, we you know send uh, clients to them as referrals if they're if you know they end up needing a very complex privacy policy okay oh that's so, good to know yeah. it's nice to know that you, yeah. can, you can help people out even if your own service doesn't doesn't work best um i'm a i'm a huge fan of of knowing boundaries that's for sure and yeah. and i think that's really important when it comes to this type of industry that yep. we're in yep you have the most sublimely straightforward pricing 
ever, which is a, just a delight. You know, I, there's no kind of pricing table. There's just the price, which is uh, which is just refreshing. I, I often think if I go into a restaurant, I really don't want to be sort of confronted with, well, you can have you can have the pizza at this price or this price or this price or this one. Are you going to yeah. go for the, the upgrade, sir? It's just, just give me the plate of food and I'll pay for it. And you have one price and it's dead easy to understand. It's $10 a month, but... Um, you can get it for ninety nine bucks a year. Am I am I reading that right, or have I just totally sold something that doesn't exist? It's one price. No, right? no, that that's exactly it, oh, and that's good. actually a key reason why uh, a key value, I guess you could say, we want it. One of our key values is just like trying to be as straightforward as possible without overstepping ourselves and like not actually saying what's truthful about privacy laws. I guess you could say because uh, we do have some competitors. I think that kind of stretch the scope of things, but anyways. Uh, we have some competitors that charge on a per privacy law basis. So depending on how many privacy laws you need to comply with determines the fee you'll pay. Um, I think that that could res- that could result in some ethical concerns um, being like, okay, well, now I have an incentive to have this person comply with as many privacy laws as possible. Um, so we wanted to keep things simple and just say, here's our price. It includes a set of policies to protect one website. If it's a good fit for you, awesome. Let's move forward. If it's not, that's okay too. And go, you know, you can go elsewhere. But by offering one clear price point, we're not incentivized to do anything other than provide the disclosures for, that are, you're required to provide uh, within your website policies. Yes. Now I am guessing that you don't do like a free trial because <laughs> I'm not sure how that would even work. Do you? Is there any sort of like sign up, have 14 days of policy for free it's i guess it's not going to work that way so we don't offer a free trial where our business model is is that we're extreme our entire business model is focused on partnering up with web design firms and that's just because you know my background being a web design owner um i really didn't feel like i was getting my hand held during the, like the, like with like other solutions out there. So we built term again to work with web design agencies. So that in, and so where our money goes to is giving web agencies a free license forever. Um, so on the agency partners page of term um, we, you know, ask people if you're interested, you can apply to be an agency partner. Uh, basically you have to just have a working agency website, um, and, uh, and assuming it works and loads and looks good, we'll, we'll approve you and we'll give you a free license for your own agency forever. Um, so I guess it's not really a free trial because it's free forever. Um, but it's, you know, we at least give a free one to agencies so they can try us out, test our products, see if they like it. And if they do, we give them the ability to use our reseller or affiliate program to recommend term again to their clients. Okay. So it's like a word of mouth a solution isn't it you you give yes. people the the ability to protect their own agency's website with your policies and then yes obviously you know that's working out well for us okay we've built another six sites this last couple of months we'll offer that as a solution over here i get it yeah that that's a really that's quite an ingenious business model i like that thank you yeah i i really just kind of thought about well you know me being the agency owner um, I just thought, what do I need to see? And like, I'll be like, well, I know privacy policies are not why I got into web design. They are a byproduct of something I just have to deal with. So it's going to take a lot for me to pay out of pocket, especially for like the first license. So I just felt like the only way I'm going to turn heads is if I give them something free to start the conversation. And and that's been, you know, it's been fruitful for us. It It does get the conversation going. And it's, and it's great to know that agencies are taking advantage and getting policies that are added to their website that, you know, a lot of law firms say that we have better product than they can produce. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah it's really encouraging. Really nice. You'll find out about that um, scheme, if you like, over at uh, termageddoncom <laughs> forward slash agency dash partners. It's one of the main menu items uh, on the homepage. And so you can find out all about that. What a fabulously interesting conversation. It's not usual that we get into the law side of things, but today we have. I I feel like I've answered, or rather, I've asked all the questions, but maybe there's something that you, know, you wanted to e- eke out of it and go for it. Tell me if there's anything I missed. You know, you, you asked some questions that I, I've never heard before, and I've done podcast interviews for several years now. Um, uh, so, no, I appreciate you taking the time to really dive in because it sounds like the questions you asked were just genuine questions. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I would say rather than bringing anything new to the conversation, I would just reemphasize, like, uh, you know, 
privacy, if, if you take away anything from this call, just remember privacy laws do not care about where your business is located. Mm. Privacy laws protect the people of that state or country. And if you're collecting that personal information from those people, you may need to comply with those privacy laws. So privacy laws are broad reaching because they can apply to businesses outside of their jurisdiction, which makes it's going to make the next couple of years certainly very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, where can we find you apart from the termageddon.com website? Where are there, you know, an email address or a Twitter handle or some some place where people can easily reach out to you if they've got any any thoughts on what we've been talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on Twitter. I'm a Twitter person. So Deep Space Hans, uh, feel free to follow me. I'll follow you back. Uh, Throw any questions you would like my way. Um, You'll also see my bio on Deep Space Hans, um, a a link to my wife's handle. uh, If you're wanting a true expert to provide some insights, she'll preface it saying this is not legal advice, but she is a rock star um, at Privacy Law. Um, and then in general, uh, Termageddon, you can uh, go to the footer of our website and see all of our social media links for Termageddon. Got it. I can see them right now. Um, Hans, what a fabulous conversation. Thanks for joining us today on the WP Builds podcast. Thanks so much, Nathan. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. Very nice to chat to Hans Skillrud about Termageddon. This may very well be something that you're interested in availing yourself of, because let's face it, The majority of people listening to this podcast, they're web developers, they're creating websites, and we're not legal experts. So it's a very good idea to hand all of this stuff over to people who know what they're doing. And as you've heard in the podcast, Hans really does. Now, remember that you can get 10% off your first Termageddon order if you use the code WPBUILDS at the checkout. Once more, WPBUILDS, all lowercase, use that as the coupon code and 10% will be yours off your first order. Good deal. Okay, we will be back next Thursday. It'll be an interview episode with my good friend David Wormsley. We'll also be back on Monday for a slightly different take on This Week in WordPress because we've changed things around a little bit now that Paul Lacey has stepped down as the co-host. Well, that's not entirely true. He's going to be coming back probably once every six weeks or so, but it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a combination of different co-hosts and we will start on Monday, but I won't let you know too much about that. Just to say, come to wpbuilds.com forward slash live 2 p.m. UK time to find out more. Okay, that's it. Got some cheesy music coming in right now and I'm just going to say... Bye-bye for now.